So on most of these cameras, first thing it does is comes up with the password there. So I'll go ahead and input my password. And then I'll take a look at all the functions again, just make sure I'm good to go. Photo video. I did make a decision that I was going to do only one photo in a series during the summer. Uh, just trying to get an inventory over the summer. When I get to the fall, I'll probably change that to two photos. Uh, but I'm also doing the video too, so one photo and a video should be plenty enough for the summer. Just so much easier to put the names on here. It's one less thing you got to do in the field, especially with as much as I want to get done tomorrow, putting 10 cameras out. If I can get the names in the cameras tonight, check the battery strength and make sure everything else is good to go with modes. All I got to do is get it up on the tree, uh, put my camera on the tree to make sure it's the correct view angle, hit start and get out of there. This camera's all set. And I take a look. Battery looks good on that. It's got the timestamp on it. This one's good to go. Nice thing is, is right now almost all my batteries are somewhere around two thirds of battery life. Gives me an opportunity to, to buy some better batteries uh, over the summer. Lithium batteries are a bit more expensive, but from everything I've read, from everything I've watched on YouTube, everybody has said the lithium definitely lasts a bit longer. So I'll slowly change over all my batteries to lithium. Uh, first one I'm going to do here is the Tacticam, and then the first camera that I have to change next, I'll have some more lithium batteries. Just got some alkaline batteries in it right now that were actually last year's batteries. So I will put those to the side and use in one of the other cameras that uses up a bit less energy. Maybe only get a month or two months out of them, but hey, I'm going to use them until they're done. So I do have the check-in picture set on my app on my phone for my Tacticam. So even if there's no deer coming past in a couple of days, I'm still getting a picture every day just to let me know that my camera is working or just no deer in front of it. Finally here, the pup and I are up early and heading out to put our 10 trail cameras out on public land for the year. So excited that I'm gonna start being able to collect data. We'll see you in the field. in here along the edge of the swamp where I just put this camera I'm gonna put a tree stand so it's pretty cool just a transition area for them coming from bedding out there there's a bunch of hay fields and there's a swamp right behind us So I didn't leave scent in the woods. I was hoping I was going to catch it in between rain, but it's all right. I'm out here right now, and I'm just getting ready to set up a third camera. Got this deer trail that's coming from this field that's about 200 yards away. Got a couple of oaks in here, some red oaks. 
and we went ahead and put a trail cam up right there tried to camouflage it with a branch a little bit so there wasn't as much as a side view look it's looking at this intersection of trails here one that comes across towards me and below the dog one that goes back left uphill a lot of rain last night it's a nice day to check cameras because your scent's being washed away i'm not too worried about it right now end of may first week of june just getting cameras out for the first time but as i go back over the summer i really try and make sure i go in on wet days and i try and make sure that when i go in i come from a direction that's behind where the camera is facing and behind the stand based on the wind direction that i'm going to be hunting it really try to do best i can to keep my scent out of there you know all summer and all fall even if it takes a little bit of a loop to walk around to get where I'm going. There's one huge advantage of this stand and camera location is like 90% of the walk is on a trail, a hiking trail. So I can get like over four tenths of a mile in on a hiking trail that deer are used to smelling humans on. And it's only the last tenth of a mile I gotta bounce off of that and hop down to the area where I'm gonna put up sticks and hang on stand. how deer get used to humans on hiking trails look at this nice rub sitting right here not even 20 yards off this hiking trail I'm going to come in from the back side of this which is the east side of this every time So when the pup and I were in here in early March, I actually found this place. It's the top of a ridge that heads out into a bunch of hay and cornfields about 300 yards north. And on the ridge itself, it's like 95% evergreens that were planted after World War II. And I found this one area, which is maybe 60 yards by 30 yards and it's full of white oaks and red oaks that are mature with a scrape right in the middle and a trail coming up through. I think it's gonna be a great place to catch some of these deer uh, cruising afternoons heading towards these fields.
here that's coming down the finger. It's got farmer's fields on both sides. It's all private. And this is where this trail leaves private, comes on to public. This trail lies out and goes down that way. And the trail goes across the hill right there. Got a big white oak about 20 yards away that I'm gonna go ahead and put a tree stand in. And there we go. Got a tech cam, self cam. Give me an idea of what I'm seeing on a daily basis. Ready to go home, buddy? Let's get out of here.